All right, what I'd like to do today is to share with everyone um, the journey of what a PhD is like, a doctor of philosophy. So at the start, I would like to qualify by saying I'm actually a biomedical scientist. That means I work on the medical part and we do a lot of research in that area. That does not mean that what I'm gonna talk about does not apply to other disciplines. Because fundamentally, a PhD is to, is to develop the way you think. And I'll share with you. So what is it like? If you go to the internet, you will find or talk to your friends, they're never short of a lot of advice. On the left-hand side, you will see the good. They say, why well, you should do a PhD. And you will see there's a whole bunch of people will say, hey, don't do a PhD, all right? So this big divide, there are reasons for both sides. They're not wrong, but it's how you handle your PhD. So what is a PhD? Now, if you talk to some who have beginning to think about doing a PhD, they may have this wrong idea that first of all, it's like an elevated mythical status. If I got a PhD, I am like God, that's not true. So some people think you must be a genius to be a PhD, to do a PhD, or during your PhD, you must discover something or create something incredible or else you fail. Or some people think that if you do a PhD, then you become a professor and nothing else. And of course, some people may think that if I do a PhD after that, I get a better paying jobs. Well, you can look at a PhD actually as a degree. After your bachelor's, you can do a master degree or some sort, and then you can end up with a PhD, all right? So it is like a journey through your academic achievements. So what is it like? <clears throat> Essentially, a PhD involves doing research in original areas, and you do what we call knowledge creation in a specialized domain. So you will learn during this PhD period. You will learn and you will acquire new skill sets like technical skills, if you're a medical scientist, you will learn how to design experiments and how to analyze data and also teaches you how you can design your own project and manage it. Now, beyond this, there are also soft skills that you're gonna learn like reading and writing papers. And you learn how to present your work and you learn how to communicate. So these are the kind of tools or skill sets you will acquire. But there is something much more than this, all right? And I'm gonna share with you and that is what the excitement of a PhD can be. So what is it like doing a PhD? So a lot of students ask me, what is it like? Is it something I come to work and, you know, nine to five? Actually, it's something like this. You basically go where no man dares to go. If you want to do good PhD, you're going to explore things that people have thought may not be possible or things which are difficult, so-called. It is daunting, no doubt. It is very demanding. And it can be exhausting at times. But once you break the back of what you're looking for, it is exhilarating and rewarding, okay? That is a fact. So PhD is actually a journey. It is not a destination. So along the way, there'll be a lot of crossroads. Essentially in a PhD, what you want to acquire is this. The best kind of lessons you learn and take away from a PhD is that you will learn how to learn. Why? Because whatever you've done will be passé. Many years from now, what you've done will be old knowledge. So what you need is to acquire new ones. And so during the PhD journey, if you have learned how to learn, that is the start of your whole future. And you will learn how to question things. And you don't take things for granted. And something PhD is very straightforward. So you see, you just take an aim and I just go straight to the objective. That is not the case. Often it's like this. You want to aim to that and you take a very convoluted navigating through a lot of difficulties. Eventually you reach there. And sometimes 
you might actually go somewhere else and discover something new. So a PhD in some ways is very unpredictable because you want to reach the goal, but it could be a new goal that you've never set up to do. And in the journey of this discovery, you might find something new. And you're always going against time because your PhD candidature has a certain time. And that is where a lot of people feel they're very stressed out with it, right? So in many ways, a PhD turns a cook into a chef. A cook basically is a person who can cook and follow instructions. And you basically become this guy, Ratatouille, right? He becomes a chef, you think of a new idea, you serve a new recipe. You have to understand what it needs or what are needed to create this kind of new recipes. So a good graduate study is actually a process of development that we turn a cook just following instructions in the bachelor's of doing experiments and we turn them into a chef where he start concocting new recipes. One question a lot of people ask me is, oh my God, I heard a lot of bad things about PhD, right? So how do I survive my PhD studies? And on the left side, you can see, oh, people have been talking about it in the internet. Well, the challenges are during your PhD period is how do you manage your time, your resources, your constraints? It could be your personal. And usually the candidates who do PhDs are high achievers. And when they fail to achieve a point, they take it very hard on themselves. And so failure along this road of doing PhD is given. You will fail. But it's not so much of how you fail during a PhD. It's how you learn to get out of it. And that is what the value of a PhD study is. So it's a journey that essentially shapes your mind, your soul, and your attitude. It builds character. And like I tell many PhD students, welcome to real life. In life, you will never be smooth. You will have to find your way. So a PhD, a good PhD development is to get you ready to face the next phase of your life. Next question everyone asks is, okay, I get a PhD, then what do I do with my PhD? Well, usually people think about a domain knowledge expert. You can be a in academia and become a postdoc, a professor and so forth, or you can join the industry and you become a researcher because that's what your domain knowledge is, right? But there is more. There are many others that you can contribute to if you have done your PhD well. So essentially, if you've learned how to learn during a PhD time, you can contribute to many industries. So on the right side is the academics, right? The PhD, become a professor and so forth. And as you go along, you see today, in today's world, we are translating a lot of things that we learn and we do in lab into real life, into having impact in society. It can be in business. And usually we think of business as very dark and you know, not good. But you think about it, it is business that can actually drive, to bring the funds into your lab to do the work. Then you can see communication. So I have PhD students who are now basically a, a science journalist and they actually not only advise the policy makers, they're part of it. They are science information uh, uh, source and even finances. We have PhDs who have gone into IP law, intellectual property law. So all these things put together makes the world goes round. So having a PhD does not end with just being in academics. So very quickly, just wanna end with this. I want you to know that PhD is only a start, it's not an end. So if you do it well, you can have impact to society. So at a point when you're about to ask yourself the question, do I want just to be an average Joe the rest of my life? Or do I wanna do something impactful? And I want to remind you of one thing is this. Doesn't mean you get a PhD, you necessarily get the best job. Frankly, you've got to finance, you earn much more than doing a PhD. But you do a PhD because you love what you do. So then the big question here today is, 
why come to NUS, right? Well, I've been here for a while, and one of the things I've observed about this small little country is this. It is a very progressive, it's multicultural, and Singapore, just like the university, like Singapore, is a world-class university here in Asia, and they have a relenting aspiration to do better. I always remember Singapore is a very small country. It's a little dot. You can't even see them on a map. And they always have to now scale. So Singapore, the National University of Singapore, is a fine example of one of these institutes that has to continue and aspire to be better. So I hope to see you and join us in this warm place. I have to admit, one of the things I really dislike about Asia is that it's too hot and it's humid. But if you like this climate, it's wonderful. But thank goodness we have aircon. All right, thank you.